I've been using red light therapy for many years now and people often ask me, hey, do I really need one of these fancy LED panels or lasers? Can I just go outside or stand by a fire? Now, since I've got a device that measures light, it's also known as the spectrometer, I thought, you know what? Let's light the fire, get the device out and see if there's any therapeutic red light coming from the fire. Now, after doing this test, I can say that yes, the red light is there as you probably guessed, but there's not much of it. Let me explain. So I got the fire going really well and then I decided to make two different tests. Uh, well, there's a couple of tests, but first I thought I'd test the light energy with the glass door shut, and then I would open it up and test the light energy with the glass door open. I tried to test at around six inches from the fire, uh, but that was quite hot and um, I didn't want to use a roller, so maybe I was actually further away, I'm not too sure. But yeah, as you're gonna see on screen, uh, the first readings are through the glass, with the glass door shut at about six to eight inches. Okay, so this is what my meter was picking up. Now, there's a bit to unpack here. So first up, I have no idea what's going on at the 670 spike here. I did a bunch of readings and I kept seeing these spikes. This curve down here is a lot more natural, what you'd expect. Um, there is a random little spike there as well at about 590. This one here at 770, yeah, I'm perplexed. If you know a bit about light or fire and um, you can explain this, let me know. If fire randomly puts out a ton of light at 770 nanometers, then yeah, that's going to be a fun fact that I didn't know. But I have a feeling it's just something going on with the sensor or the, the meter. Um, you know, maybe it was overloaded. Or I, I don't know. But it kept showing up. So there is that, uh, but we're just gonna ignore that for now. The main thing I wanna look at is the amount of energy. Now this is showing the total amount of energy from 380 through to 1050 nanometers, which is all um, my meter measures. So you're looking at your near infrared, your, your invisible light, light out here, and then of course the visible light down here. This figure is actually quite low, 0.12 milliwatts over centimeter squared. To put that in perspective, if you're using, say, uh, a panel, you may be getting 40, 50, 60 milliwatts over centimeter squared at six to eight inches. It's not necessarily more is better. Uh, I'm just showing those numbers as a comparison. Some research on photobiomodulation is only using five or, or 10 milliwatts over centimeter squared, but it's still a lot higher than 0.12. So I was quite surprised there because you think a fire, you know, it's very hard. There's lots of energy there. But I guess what's happening is most of that energy is your mid and far infrared, which of course my device is not picking up on. And of course the near and far infrared isn't your therapeutic, um, your typical photobiomodulation red light therapy wavelengths. Those wavelengths are gonna be absorbed a lot more by um, water. So that's why we feel it as heat. And uh, there's other benefits going on there. Doesn't get the same penetration as, as your 800s or your 850 nanometer light. Hey, if you are enjoying this, hit like. I really do appreciate it. Plus, if you want to see me do more tests like this, maybe I can test the sun, for instance, be sure to hit subscribe and also leave a comment below. So let's go back to the graph. So we know that there's not much light energy hitting the body. Remember, this was taken through the glass, the door was shut. So that glass pane is going to absorb a lot of the energy. Now, the other thing to report on is the amount of red light. Now, now this is a relative scale, so uh, zero to one on the side. Uh, it's not given exact numbers, but as you can see, we know there's not much energy in total in here. Uh, and down at the red spectrum, 660, for instance, there's a very, very little amount, like maybe 5%. Uh, most of it is coming in the near infrared range around the 900s to 1000 nanometer but still very little light. Okay, so next what I did is open up the glass door, redid the test at that six to eight inch mark. Okay, so here you can see a much smoother uh, graph. It's quite interesting how, how smooth it is. Uh, that's nature and all its glory, I guess, but we still see these random peaks, one at 590-ish and this other one at 770. No idea what's going on here, so strange. Uh, we do see a slight drop off here. I don't really know what's going on around here. I don't know how reliable these numbers are. So we're going to focus more on this side and then of course the irradiance figure. Now what's interesting, remember same distance, six to eight inches, but this irradiance figure is a lot higher. It's about eight times higher than the previous reading, which was when the door was closed. The figure though is still very low. We're just under one milliwatt over centimeter squared. It's, it's okay, it's probably better than nothing, 
The main issue though at this distance is it was so hot. I could only stay here for a few seconds. Uh, I was even worried that it may cause an issue with my meter. So I didn't even want to stay there too long. But realistically, if you had a sore wrist, for instance, you're not going to stay at this distance from a fire to get a therapeutic dose, especially at this intensity. You'd have to stay there for such a long time. You'd, you'd start uh, doing some serious damage. So it was a little bit surprising and at the same time disappointing i thought there may have been more light i'm not saying it's not going to have any benefit because there may be benefits from the fire infrared for instance from a heat point of view circulation maybe uh of course sitting by fire is also very relaxing so there's that but if you are hoping to just use a fireplace to replicate what a uh, high powered led can do then unfortunately based on these tests it's not going to work that way which is um yeah, I mean, I guess that's why people are spending thousands of dollars on red light therapy devices instead of just sitting by a fire. And also, as we saw before, most of the energy is in the near infrared spectrum, not in the red and the ambers and green, if you're into that as well. Now, I also did another test at about 24 inches, which is a much more comfortable distance from this fire just to see how much of a drop off there was. And as you can see on this graph, the total power drops off quite a lot. We're down to 0 0.17 here. Uh, again, so minuscule amount, uh, we still got that random peak. So what does this all mean? Well, if you want a therapeutic dose of red light or near infrared light, go buy a red light therapy device. It's quite simple. Saying all of this, if you are seeking a more natural full spectrum way to benefit from red light therapy, then check out my interview with Brian Richards from Sauna Space. His products combine both photobiomodulation, your red light therapy, with sauna, and he claims you can get the best of both worlds. Learn more here.